Good morning to all. Today we are going to discuss about the wiring technique of maxillofacial surgery. So for the introduction, for the simple fracture and tooth bearing part may be adequately immobilized by the intermaxillar fixation. And the clinical union can be expected within four weeks in nearly all the cases without any general anesthesia. So there are various types of wiring. So direct intercranial, indirect intercranial wiring and the archival fixation, circumandibular wiring, trans wiring, K wiring. So Gilmer's wiring. So for 50, uh, in this, the 15 centimeter length and 0.35 mm diameter wire is passed around the two emerging interdental spaces. So the wire passed around the neck of the tooth. The two ends are tightened by twisting together to produce a 3 mm tape. So adequate number of teeth are wired in similar fashion in both the jaws. So the intermaxial fixation is effect, effected after reduction of the fracture by twisting the separate teeth together, obtaining a cross raising wherever possible. And the cut ends are bent into the internal space to avoid any injury tissue damage. For advantages, it is the most simple and rapid method of immobilization of the jaw. And the disadvantage, it requires a complete removal of wire to open the mouth during in emergency situations. So the resident wiring is a single length of two length wire which passes around the neck of the second molar on each side and brought both ends are brought into the buckle side. The ends are twisted and to the entire length and forming a strong base wire that comes towards the midline from each second molar. So the two base wire are grasped twist at the midline and adapted to the neck of the teeth and the buckle side. This base wire is secured to individual teeth by using additional interactive wire. And this uh, advantage is a type of horizontal offers a strong fixation and substitute for arch work. A six wiring this should be sufficient number of teeth on either side. The wire passed interproximally within two teeth away from the fracture line in the figure of eight manner. And in the fracture side, it should uh, the wire pass without looping. And that part will act as uh, a small wire can be tied for a fixation. And the advantage is it is used to stabilize the dental alveolar fracture inclusion dental arches and to stabilize the luxated teeth. So eyelids wiring is uh, made by using a 0.3 mm diameter stainless steel wire. The wire should stretch uh, from its original length at 10% to prevent any loosening of the incision. But it should not get overstretched because it will uh, become brittle and easily broken. And the eye, eye should be made with a 3 mm diameter. So the technique is the wire is passed into the internal space from the buckle to the lingual or the parietal side, or nearly two thirds. And then it curve around the mesial and the distal cell. The distal wire should insert to the eye and twist tightly. And for uh, after this, the uh, intermaxial fixation done with a 15 centimeter length of 0.5 mm wire. And it then should be slightly hooked, which pass through the eyelids of the opposite side and clip together. Okay. After reducing the fracture, the wire should be tightened. Uh, uh, should be tightened. So the posterior wire should be tightened first to avoid any excessive traction in the lower anterior. And the arrangement of the tie wire, the V pat V shape pattern to prevent any lateral movements and loosening also occurs. So the eyelids are removed after loosening the wire twist by anti-clockwise rotation. So the shortened section containing the distorted wire previously involved in the twist should be removed first to avoid any damage. And the eyelids are script. From the strong forceps, continuous form traction applied at the right angle to the labiobuccal surface of the teeth, the wire will deliver without any difficulty. So the advantages it should require without disturbing and the bridging wire can be removed without disturbing the main wire, and the breakage of any single wire can be replaced easily. But the disadvantage, the eyelids can frequently drawn into the internal space, and which is very difficult to use. So there are some modifications like Williams modification. The one end is passed back to the eyelid by passing down the groove of the rod to form a small loop and twist around the end. The other end, the which it should be used for the isolated teeth, like this manner. So the arch bar, arch bar fixation is a quick, effective, and inexpensive method of fixation. The arch bar should be measured from the first molar to the first molar and it's placed. Uh, the plate should be 
phase towards the gingival margin and the 15 cm diameter wire should be taken from the distal to the wire is passed from the buccal to the lingual side below the arch bar from the lingual to the buccal side above the arch bar just together so when placing an arch bar across a displaced fracture segment it should be cut at the fracture side and placed separately so the advantages uh, the fix uh, is the fixation of the above strip and alveolar crest fracture and the long term fixation for non surgical fracture management and the disadvantage is time consuming damage to the gingival tissue high potential for the quick accidents for the surgeons next coming to the circummandibular wiring so this picture shows the circummandibular wiring the, the all should pass from the lingual side without damaging or buccal side without damaging the facial water and metal now and it should uh, the wire should pass from uh, the side so the, the operator middle finger or index finger on the other hand lies in the lingual circus to protect the duct and the lingual nerve and the all is pushed through the skin and reach the lower border of the mandible and a point frame of wire is inserted to the eye layer and all is withdrawn until the lower border and directed upwards along the buccal surface of the mandible to pierce the buccal surface the wire should contact with the bone throughout the uh, procedure the two ends of the wire on the splint is adjusted the lingual and the buccal wires are twisted together and cut and finished inwards so this coming to the suspension wiring there are contact with suspension wiring the arch bar is secured First, and upon the lower arch, the frontal zygomatic region is exposed with the lateral eyebrow incision. Hole is drilled in the zygomatic process of the frontal bone with a 5 mm above the zyga frontal zygomatic suture. And a pre stretched 0.5 mm stainless steel wire is passed through this hole and bent back so that the equal length put it on each side of the burr hole. The two ends of the wire are thread through the uh, eye of the road zygomatic or uncrimped. The all is then passed downwards and forward behind the frontal process of the zygomatic bone deep to the zygomatic arch to pierce to the oral mucus and upper muscle cells in the region of upper molar teeth. The wire ends are detached from the all and secured to the artery process while the all is withdrawn, the wire is secured to the arch bar. And then it should be tied with the point frame suspension wire. A circumzygomatic wiring, the point of suspension is between the tension within the counter and the temporal process of the zygomatic bone. All is introduced either directly through the skin or through the sensation. The all pierce the temporal fascia, pass medial to the zygomatic bone and buttress to pierce the buccal surface in the first molar. And a pre stressed stainless steel wire is attached to the eye of the and throat. So this shows the circumzygomatic wiring. And then the all is withdrawn just above the arch and reinsert this time to the lateral to the zygomatic bone and directly. Downwards and forward to MS the buccal circus. This makes the wire loop around the zygomatic bone. So the wire ends are secured and adjusted so that the rest of the wire. So the ends of the wire are secured to the arch bar. And it can be used for the liquid one structure. And piriform aperture suspension, the aperture is exposed to the intraoral incision above the lateral incision, and then the elevator and holes are drilled and the wire is passed and attached to the arch bar. And for the intraorbital suspension, the incision is made in the upper buccal. Upper buccal surface above the canine region, I close the inferior orbital margin lateral to the foramen. The globe should be protected with the rounded end of the over elevator. The bar hole is drilled, wire is passed with travel into the mouth and attached to the arch bar. And there are some uh, indications like non displaced favorable fracture, grossly communicated, reduced to subtrophic medical fractures in the children's and condylar fracture. Contraindication cannot be used for medically compromised anesthesia patient and uh, pulmonary function compromised pulmonary function patient and psychiatric and neurological disorder patients. And the advantages will be the more conservative and disadvantages uh, difficult for a uh, compromised patient due to the IMF, intermax fixation, loss of function of the tissue, nutritional status of the patient will be affected, and occlusion is the only guide, and difficult in speech and social impediments. These are the references and thank you.